eight years old, young boy, and I'm deathly sick, literally deathly sick. My parents are neglecting me, they're ignoring me, I'm going to school every day sick till the school nurse sends me home. And I'm floundering around, I'm basically dying. Finally, I'm sent to the county hospital. And when I get to the county hospital, they put me on a gurney and they tell my parents, you know, we don't think he's going to make it. It's too late to bring him in. I had kidney disease and lung disease and all kinds of other things. And I was wheeled away and put in isolation and they did some procedures. And then I was left alone that night. First time, eight years old, away from home, all by myself. No roommates, no nurses, no nothing. Totally left in a room which could be kind of scary for some people. And I was kind of lonely. I was feeling depressed. I was feeling abandoned. And then I'm laying there in this darkened room, and the room lights up. I mean, it's, it's a, a sunburst. And I'm looking at this, and I'm going, wow, this should be blinding me. But it wasn't. I was looking at that, and I was feeling loved. Here I was crying out to the universe that I felt abandoned, and all of a sudden, I'm feeling the embrace of the universe. I truly was being loved. And then I noticed that I was sitting up. Well, when I looked down, my body was down there. But the other self was sitting up. And then the light got brighter and brighter and brighter and consumed all the darkness in my room. And then there was this angelic, divine presence have no clue what it was. But I was given this futurama of the next 50 years of my life. It just kind of ran through high school, ran through the John F. Kennedy assassination, which I, you know, I didn't know who John F. Kennedy was. I, I mean, I was seeing events. I had no, no figure what it was. I saw the Vietnam War. The good thing about seeing the Vietnam War was I saw that afterwards I was still alive. <laughs> so that was always good. So somebody say, oh, you're really brave. No, when Vietnam, I wasn't necessarily brave. I knew I wasn't going to get killed. The guy that was afraid and did something, that's the guy that deserved a medal. Truly, there's a whole difference. So I saw who I was going to marry. I saw my children. I saw where I was going to live. I saw a lot of future events. And over the next 50 years of unfolding of my life, it was like I was living deja vu. But the puzzling part of this vision, and maybe there's some numerologists here or, or astrologers, they could figure it out, but I kept seeing these two numbers. It was 29, and then the, the, it would change and look like 59. It was two, 29 and 59, it kept flipping over. So I thought at the time, I'm either going to be dead at 29, I'm going to be dead at 59, something's happening, right? For those that know about Saturn rising and all these other things, maybe it makes sense. But I also had a major heart attack. Uh, well, I have 12 major heart attacks, but one of my heart attacks, <laughs> uh, when I went to the doctor and the doctor looked at me and, and I go in there and I'm, I'm almost, I'm like a couple of weeks shy of 59 years old. And I go in there and, I, and I'm complaining. I said, look, I've been a vegetarian for 60, you know, almost 60 years and uh, I don't do coffee, I don't do booze, I don't do cigarettes, I don't do, you know, caffeine, nicotine, nothing. I mean, and the guy looks at me and he says, you know, if you hadn't done all that, you would probably have been dead at 29. And there I was a week or two from my 59th birthday. And what's interesting about that was just shortly before that, there was a guy from my high school class, a guy named Paul O'Brien, and we, we learned about our relationship. We were living in 40 miles from San Francisco, but we were both born in San Francisco. We didn't know that. We're talking one day, and we find out that we were both born March 16, 1946, in San Francisco at St. Mary's Health Hospital, about an hour apart. So if you're the, into astrology, you've got to figure, okay, how did it turn out for him, right? He was dead before 59. So going into that one heart procedure was a little like, Wait a minute, this guy just died, and we got the same astrology chart, right? So, my growing up, a lot of things that I dreamt about or 
It was more than a dream. I just use the term dream because some people, this audience doesn't need to be told or explained to. But from these events I was shown, I knew in my senior year that Kennedy was going to get assassinated. I made the mistake of going to my high school principal the week before the assassination and telling the principal of my high school, hey, Mr. Stanga, you know, uh, the president's going to get assassinated in Texas next week. It, okay, Bill. Okay, come on. They brought me back to class. And then the next week, what happens? Those that know history, he was shot. Now, the only thing that was different about my visions and what happened was, in my visions, and I could be wrong, so they're not 100%, right? In my visions, there was more than one person in the assassination. So maybe the government's right. Maybe I was wrong. But shortly, shortly after getting out of that hospital, going back a little bit, when I came home, I was with my mother, and about a month out of the hospital, and we're sitting in the front room, and I hear this angelic choir singing divine, almost feminine voices. It was, you know, it was like, it was that soft, soft voice. And my mom's looking at me, and I'm looking at her, she says, you leave the television on, the radio on? Rick, no. We went around through the whole house looking for any source of the music, of the singing. We went outside. We walked a whole block and a half down the street each direction, and we still heard the voices of these angelic beings singing. No matter what direction we walked, it never changed the volume. Came back to the house, and my, I asked my mother, what's going on? She says, it's just the angels singing. And at that age, I totally accepted it, but what else could it have been? The next couple days go by, and our pet dog ran out on the street, was hit by a car, and it was just, you know, laying out there, couldn't move, it looked bad. And I went out there, and, you know, I'm nine years old now, and I, I grabbed the dog, and I bring the dog in the house. And then for some reason, I had this inspiration. I visualized energy coming out of the sky and the cloud and everything. And I visualized the energy coming down through the top of my head. I didn't have the nomenclature for any of this, but I'm visualizing light coming down and coming out my hands. And I tensed up my body, kind of like dynamic tension, you know, the exercises like SRF does for the recharging, kind of like that. And I just put my hands on the dog and it was electrical jolt. And the crippled dog all of a sudden jumped up off the couch, started barking and ran around and nothing ever happened. He was perfect.